the life, the facts of life. But that's not how the song goes. The facts of life. That's pretty close. Okay. The facts of life. You reminded me of like Blair and like a, this is this is really taking me back to an 80s show I didn't watch very often. All the girls were all different. Yeah, it okay. worked great together. Okay. And kind of what we're talking about today is that when we work together for a common greatness, man, things go so much better. Especially when we're diverse and different and have that different abilities and different giftings when so, we think different. Somebody gonna answer that phone? <laughs> Moving on up. The Jeffersons. To the east side. We'll be right back. To a high rise apartment in the sky. That's pretty good. Moving on up. Yeah, it sound good. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. Good to have you with us today. And uh, we have an incredible show for you. You look fabulous today. We're praying for an epic day if for you. If you're a new subscriber, type in where you're from. We like to read that on Wednesdays. And I've been loving this. Uh, the, these last episodes. We're just talking about celebrating the differences between one another. Yeah. And learning not to let them divide us, but instead learning to... See our differences as strengths. As treasures. Right. And when I can pull that like out of Holly and she can pull it out of me and rather than being mad because we're different, but we can work together. Yeah. You become an unstoppable force is what you'll find out today. But watch, watch this, clip. this clip. When you got married, God did something magical and made you two one. Come on, somebody. And now you're halves without each other. <laughs> Say to your spouse right now, you are the one for me. And in the world, people say, well, you're just in the way of my dreams. You know, you're just stopping me. You're not helping. You're a distraction from the ambitions that I have in my life. Don't do that. They're not in the way of your dreams. The person that you married is the key to your dreams. You need each other. And if you will press in together, you will find that you can do anything together. There's power in agreement. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 19. Pastor Scott, read it for us. Again, truly, I, t I like that he says again. He's like, again. hey, I tell you I'll that tell you if again. two of you on earth agree about anything. Yeah. So there's power in two agreeing and they ask for it. It will be done for them by my father in heaven. So and this is Jesus talking. Get married. Mm -hmm. They have the power to do anything if they can just get into alignment. But how hard does Satan work to keep us living separate lives and up to separate things and not really headed in the same direction. What did Jesus say about it a house so divided? It's so hard to get, us to get us divorced even. What did Jesus say about a house divided? You cannot stand. It's impossible to stand. And that's, and I'm going to kind of shift a little bit here. That's why it's important that as parents raising children, that you get a, like our parenting program, a parenting program where you get on the same, because you got two different people came from two different homes yeah. with two different parenting styles, yeah. and then th they can't agree. Yeah. So finding a way to agree, right, with some wisdom out there, and that's why marriage books and this marriage conference that we did, finding a ways to agree in the home becomes powerful. And really valuing the differences of, of each other, because as a parent, a um, uh, dad is going to respond to kids differently than a mom. Right. Naturally. Right. And so you have to agree that the differences are also healthy because like, I remember falling down when I was a kid, like I was like three years old. It's one of my first memories. Mm -hmm. And I fell down really hard and I was crying. I was in the street. Yeah. And uh, mom came over and, you know, it was like, oh, honey, you're okay. You're okay. And that made me cry even harder. Cause, yeah. You know, mama comes over yeah. and gives you the hug and yeah. the boo-boo and, but then dad comes over and he goes, you're going to make him into a big baby. And then, you know, stop it. You're going to make him into a big baby. And he goes, get up, boy, walk it off. You'll be fine. Yeah. And I needed both. I realize now, like looking back, I needed both voices. I needed the voice of it's going to be OK. Yeah. But I also needed the voice as time to get up. Yes. Which, which is what cultivated. And there's an agreement that the two are better together. If I just had the one voice, it wouldn't have been as strong. You know, it's what really I think really makes a boy into a man. Hmm. Back team. <laughs> Back team. Do you remember that spray? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like you, you had a sunburn. You would, you would scrape. You would scrape your leg up right riding the oh bike. Oh my gosh! And then mom comes over with that back team. You're like, what is it? You're like, oh, it's gonna make it feel better. And it's pure. I believe it's gasoline. It's, I could be it's wrong. Acid. It's pure. It's just acid. It just eats your skin off. I think. 
<laughs> it, there's no greater pain than the back dean. <laughs> and you just go. Oh, I just remember getting a sunburn real bad, and you, mom would say, "Well, let me put some back dean on." No, thank you. No, I'm good. No, oh, it I'm doesn't good. hurt. It doesn't hurt. I, I think that's what happens anymore. though. Is like you scrape your leg up real bad. And mom goes back dean. You go. No, no, no. I'm no, fine. No, I'm not crying. No, this is great. No, it feels perfect. It actually feels Pouring better. Out, rubbing alcohol on the wound, or <laughs> hydrogen peroxide, and the, it would foam up. You just scream. <laughs> ah! Like it was, it hurts more now. <laughs> and that can happen. You know what? I think conversations can become back team. It does cleanse. <laughs> it's clean. And it's it good to come to have a house. And you find this, this, the devil gets in there and he begins to divide the house. And he does it a lot with pride where I do more. My way I'm, or the highway. Yeah, it's my, my way is the best way rather than listening and coming up and going, oh, and having some, my, me and Holly's, um, best things have been fights that come into a great compromise and you look back and you go yeah i guess my way wouldn't have been the perfect way yeah and she's like my way wouldn't have been the perfect way but our way yeah was the best way i've come at my teenagers before as they were growing up and i'm like what are you doing like you're out of your mind like and, and i'm bringing correction but then when they explain why they did what they did i go oh you ever had that happen oh Where yes a lot okay oh. i was really mad but now that you said it that way yeah I do see your perspective and I see how there's a, this is just a misunderstanding and you know, you're not actually as much trouble as you were in to be, because being a fair judge is very important as a parent being able to really, and having kids who are able to explain their perspective and their side. Cause there's just, different perspectives. Yeah. And you go, Oh yeah, I did. Okay. Now that may, that, that makes sense. I told you to take out the garbage and you didn't because I didn't know that mama told you to clean your room. Yeah. And so, you know, I, you can be a legalistic parent who's like, no, no, I don't want to hear what it is. I told you to do something. So now here's your punishment. Yeah. That's very frustrating. Yeah. Right. That's a very frustrating for a child. But instead having the ability for the child to go, oh, whoa, whoa, this is why I did this. Yeah. And then being able to be fair judge and go, oh. And I think sometimes it's like in a marriage, if you don't guard your heart and your thoughts, you, you taught this oh, two so weeks good. ago yeah. about assuming the best or assuming the worst, like believing mm -hmm. the best or assuming the worst in somebody. If you sat all day long and thought about how they just don't care about you and they're so self-centered and they're such, oh, wow, know, yeah. then when they get home and try and explain themselves, you're not listening. Mm -hmm. And you're so angry, you can't even listen to their excuses. But it's better to listen to people and value what someone's saying, even if they're still wrong, you want to give that value, right? Give them grace. Let me listen to what you're saying, but I can't do it if I've been, you know, thinking and meditating on the wrong things all day. Yes. So it becomes really important to, to try and think on the good things. Like the Bible teaches you to think on the things that are praiseworthy and excellent. Think of the good things that your spouse does do and then address the, the situation that you're addressing, but have your ears open to understand their perspective because you want to value the differences in how we do things different. Amen. Amen. So you want to uh, pray over? Sure. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you are helping us with our perspective and our blind spots this week. Lord, that we're valuing the, the people around us and how they are different than us. And Lord, we're listening to understand their perspectives better in Jesus name. Amen. We encourage you, if you got anything out of today, partner with us. It helps us. Uh, it really does helps us a credible amount. And so we encourage you $8 a week or $32 a month uh, really helps and goes a long way. And God gives seed to the sower. But today is Dad Joke Monday. Dad joke Monday. What's red and bad for your teeth? I don't know. A brick. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be bad for you. I'm reading a book on the history of glue. I just can't seem to put it down. What has four wheels and flies? A garbage truck. <laughs> Oh, cause it's, I get it. The flies. The flies. I'm starting. I, I started a book about mazes, but I got lost in it. <sighs> I had two books. I had two book jokes. You both. I like all book jokes. Yeah, we kind of writing a theme. Dad yeah. joke. Book joke. <laughs> Watch this clip. Women are very emotional. Men tend to be very logical. Take a couple. Maybe goes out to dinner. What? What did I say? <laughs> You are. You're, we're, we're men are logical, right? Okay, so say a couple goes out to, to dinner and they're meeting up with a bunch of other couples and, and so they, they, they walk in the room and the woman is immediately taking the, the energy of the rooms emotionally 
Like she's measuring the temperature emotionally of everything that's happening right now. She's looking at Todd and Nancy, and she's evaluating, are they happy? How are they feeling? Oh, they're sharing. I wonder how she's doing. And she's kind of taking that assessment of the emotions that are happening in the room. Whereas a man walks in, he's looking at, where's our table? Who's the waiter? Where's the waiter, waitress? And where's the menu? Let me look at, sits down, kind of sits in a place where he can see the entry and the exits, you know, can see the lay of the land, and then opens up the menu and begins to look at the food and the prices and wonders why, why are sandwiches so much cheaper than entrees? Why? $14 for a burger, $45 for a steak. He's thinking to himself, I'm doing a burger tonight. And so then they walk him back to the car after dinner, and, and the wife says to the husband, do you think Sharon's okay? She seemed really quiet today. You know, she just seemed off. And the husband goes, I don't know. He goes, but dinner was 200 bucks. <laughs> and then she says, is that all you care about is the money? You just care about yourself. You don't care about anyone else but yourself. Now he feels attacked and criticized. And he says, why are you so worried about how everyone is doing? Like you get so worried about, are they okay? You know, you stress yourself out with all this worry. And now they're, now they're quiet in the car. They're having a fight. And their differences of how they view things have caused them to divide. And now there's space between them. And the reality is, is that we both have blind spots. He's not seeing what she sees. She's not seeing what he sees. But God gives us somebody that can see our blind spots to help us in life. The, the differences can actually be strengths. Imagine they get back to the car and they treat it a little bit differently. She walks, you know, she says the same thing. I wonder if Sharon's okay. She seemed really quiet. And the husband says, you know, that's what I love about you. you you're always so empathetic and you, you're so aware of how people are feeling. I'm not that way. I didn't even notice. Well, somebody like that. Give the Lord a hand clap. You, you can do it the real way. Thank you. And then, then, she could, then he could say, dinner was 200 bucks. And she says, honey, thank you so much. I know things are tight right now. And you took the time and the energy and the money. And I just so appreciate you taking us out to, to dinner and doing this thing for us. Now, what are they doing? They're appreciating, just taking a moment to value the differences that they're having in each other. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And the most important thing that you can do for your home and family is make sure you're in church this weekend. Amen. I don't have anything to say about that. <laughs> he flipped the he flipped the screen so fast. What about the coming events? <laughs> nah, Jason. He's done. He's like, I'm, I'm cool. done. Yeah, See you guys. yeah. Read the read tomorrow. the comments. See ya. Bye. Some water.